Welcome to another episode of the Tobago House of Assembly's Post-Executive Council Media Briefing. This week, the Secretary of Finance and Enterprise Development, Joel Jack, and the Assistant Secretary in the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport, Jomo Pitt, addressed the media. There's a couple of things I wanted to update you all on. Um, one, uh, the sports awards that we had last year, we will be having it again this year. The target date is April 28th. Um, we intend to have an information session in which the media is invited, along with all the sporting organizations, sporting associations and clubs. Just have an idea um, on the nomination process and the nomination forms that will be issued uh, at the same time. Um, also, uh, just to bring an update on to the sporting fraternity regarding the sports policy and the sports symposium that we had last year, we're still on target for um, having that policy rolled out by the end of September. Uh, we have targeted the month of May to do community meetings, uh, to meet clubs and individuals within community, meet communities to get their um, their feedback on the, the format and um, have their input on the sports policy. Uh, last but not least, I'd like to offer my congratulations to the 15 Carifta athletes from Tobago, um, which we have increased our number by two on the members of the team, the national team. Um, from the information I have, we have about 10 repeaters and five first timers. So we intend to see an improvement on the repeaters um, and this contingent would be led, and I would dare say the national contingent would be led by none other than our Tariq Hosford and Mr. Kani Hislop, um, both gold medalists at the last Carifta Games. As a matter of fact, um, Mr. Hosford has already signaled his intent to lead the charge since he has already broken the Carifta record that he set last year in the trials uh, over the weekend. So that should give us an insight of the, um, the intent of our Tobago uh, members. Moody's recently um, issued the annual rating for the Tobago House of Assembly. And Moody's placing, placed the Tobago House of Assembly under, reg under review um, of a BW2 rating for a two-month period. This action follows Moody's rating on the 4th of March, um, in which the agency placed the Trinidad and Tobago government bond rating under review, as well for downgrade. You might recall on April 30th of 2015, April last year, Moody's downgraded Trinidad and Tobago's um, bond rating and issue rating from BAA1 to BAA2 and change the outlook from stable to negative. And last year, Moody cited the key drivers um, behind the downgrade at that time in April last year as persistent fiscal deficits and challenging prospects for fiscal reform, declining oil prices and limited economic diversification to weigh negatively on economic growth, growth prospects and a weak macroeconomic policy framework given a lack of medium term fiscal strategy and inadequate provision of vital macroeconomic data. Now that was April 2015. And uh, Moody's decision to place to, to make House of Assembly's rating under review was as a result of two key drivers, and these are as a result of our strong financial linkages between the Tobago House of Assembly and Trinidad and Tobago, and the expectation of declining revenues as a result of declining oil prices. Um, during the two-month period, Moodley will look at the likely impact of revenues for, to be, for the Tobago House of Assembly. And uh, within that two month period, we will expect a decision from Moody's both on Trinidad and Tobago and the Tobago House of Assembly. While 
um, Moody's has placed us under, under review. Um, nothing in the review cites the, our poor financial or um, performance. It has to do um, primarily with our, our linkages with Trinidad and Tobago and basically primarily because our revenues are tied to that of, of um, the national. It is not, it's never Moody's intent to rate the sub-sovereign higher than the sovereign. The sub-sovereign being Tobago and the sovereign being Trinidad. So it's never Moody's policy to rate the sub-sovereign higher than the sovereign. So we're always placed on par. So as a result of the downgrade of Trinidad and Tobago um, last year, and Moody's has placed Trinidad and Tobago on a, a watch a two, for a two-month period, that might result in a possible downgrade. Earlier this week, on Monday, March 7th, a team from the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, visited Tobago to hold discussions with the Tobago House of Assembly and to gather information for the preparation of Trinidad and Tobago's 2016 IMF Article 4 consultation report. The IMF team was led by Dr. Eli Canetti and included two other economists from the IMF. And we held a wide ranging discussions um, with, a, with an assembly led team. The team was led um, by myself and included the chief administrator, Mr. Ray Sandy, and also the chief economist in the Division of Finance and Enterprise Development, Dr. Selvon Hazel, on issues related to the performance of the Tobago economy, Tobago's current and future development trust, and its an alternative financing mechanisms, the production of Tobago specific social and economic statistics and technical assistance to the Tobago big house of assembly from the International Monetary Fund. More specifically, the, the discussion centered on the recent performance of the Tobago economy in view of the country's challenging economic circumstances. Here are discussions focused on Tobago's most recent GDP numbers and what those numbers mean in terms of the structure and performance of the Tobago economy as well as Tobago's most recent labor market data and how it relates to the national labor market statistics. We also reviewed Tobago's recent inflation um, data and we compared them vis-a-vis -vis to the national inflation data. We also discussed the implications of the economic adjustment measures announced by the Honorable Prime Minister in December last year, what those implications mean for the Tobago economy and the measures that have been instituted by the Assembly to mitigate against any deleterious consequences of these measures. We also looked at, the, at Tobago's current and future development trajectory and, uh, and how the Assembly proposes to finance its development in the immediate and near future. Here, discussion centered primarily on the, the various initiatives of the Assembly to diversify the Tobago economy and to develop an indigenous private sector. We also discussed the role and the performance of the Business Development Unit, um, or the Loans and Grant Programs, the Venture Capital Company, and as well as the performance of the Tobago Venture Capital Equity Fund, and as well as recent developments at the Cove Eco Industrial and Business Park. We also discussed some major constraints economic diversification here on the island and the various strategies that the Assembly will implement to address some of these constraints. We also discuss the strategies um, that the Assembly will employ in terms of exploring alternative financing mechanisms, such as the PPP 
for the public-private partnership arrangements um, and other revenue enhancement measures to finance Tobago's development. We also looked at the, the budgetary requests and allocation to, of the Tobago House of Assembly for fiscal 2016. We discussed in detail the budgetary requests by the Assembly to fund recurrent expenditures and development program expenditure in Tobago and the parliamentary appropriations for fiscal six, 2016. We also examine the financial constraints faced by the Assembly and the strategies and initiatives that we have implemented to recalibrate Tobago's fiscal priorities in view of the financial constraints. We also looked at the strategies that we employ to treat with the funding gap on an annual basis. And we also looked at the implications of the 7% reduction um, on the Assembly's allocation for fiscal 2016 in light of the decline in re government revenues. With respect to the generation of Tobago specific social and economic data. We discussed the recent initiatives by the central government to establish the independent National Statistic Institute, and this will replace the Central Statistical Office in the near future. And the role of this entity in treating with Tobago's longstanding and most critical need for social and economic data. We also discussed the likely relationship between the, the NSI, the National Statistic Institute, and the Assembly as it relates to generating um, statistics for the island. With respect to technical assistance from the IMF through the Regional Technical Assistance Center, CARTACT, we looked at strengthening um, that CARTAC will provide technical assistance to the Assembly in our ongoing efforts to produce timely and re reliable and accurate um, GDP data for Tobago um, and other technical assistance that will provide um, capacity building in research and, and other areas of the Assembly. I took the opportunity during the visit of the IMF team to present them with an advanced draft copy of the Social and Economic Statistical Digest for Tobago 2008-2015. Um, this publication will compile all available social and economic statistics for Tobago. And we expect that this document will be released um, as a companion document to my 2017 budget statement that will be read later in June. I must say that the discussions with the IMF team, those discussions were conducted in a very professional and forthright manner. The Assembly remains thankful for the opportunity to have its fiscal operations and performance scrutinized and examined by this reputable international agency. And we are also happy, we are also pleased to be part of the National Article 4 consultation process for Trinidad and Tobago for fiscal 2016. Apart from the IMF, I also had the opportunity to engage with, with two strategic partners on the national landscape to advance the work of the, the, the Tobago House of Assembly and the Division of Finance. Over the last two weeks, I met with the chairman and I and CEO of the Securities Exchange, the Securities and Exchange Commission, and as well as persons, personnel from the Central Bank of Trinidad and Tobago. These interactions were pursued to strengthen the linkages between um, the institutions and the assembly and to add value to the programs that we are undertaking in the division on behalf of the people of Tobago. Arising out of these discussions um, is a commitment to 
continue hosting quarterly financial education seminars with the Security and Exchange Commission. The first two invest educator programs were held at the Victor E. Bruce Financial Complex um, on Monday, Monday and Tuesday, um, yesterday and the day before. School children, employees in the workplace, and members of the public were provided with technical um, guidance and information from the Security and Exchange Commission to, to promote um, our policy of financial education to the wider public. And um, the program centered on financial um, goal setting, savings and investing, as well as various um, points to consider before investing in the stock market and also investing in bonds. Approximately 62 persons attended these three sessions and the Division on, of Finance and the, and the Securities and Exchange Commission. We are both committed to sustaining these programs to ensure that the residents of Tobago have access to up-to-date financial information to enhance their empowerment in terms of their financial education and to prevent them from making unwise financial decisions. And this is important given the prevailing economic conditions that we face. During our meeting at the Central Bank, I met with the Deputy Governor, Dr. Sandra Sukram, and other members of the Central Bank senior management team. Coming out of the meeting, we we pledge our support for the bank activities in Tobago, including the Know Your Money series, other financial education out outreach program, and other corporate social responsibility projects. Both organizations have agreed to share vital statistical data and to deepen the research between all research units in the Tobago House of Assembly and the Central Bank. As a result, Economic Management Research Unit at the Division of Finance and Enterprise Development will have greater access to the valuable data gathered by the Central Bank Statistical Department. This will assist us in having, providing data that will inform um, policy making and decision making in the assembly for specific sectors. Also on the agenda um, was the foreign exchange issues affecting Tobago businesses. This is an issue that I give a commitment to the chamber to undertake at our meeting, um, at our last meeting with the, with the president of the chamber, Mr. Selby Leslie and his team. But coming out of these discussions, it was agreed that the assembly and both the central bank will collaborate to to treat with and where possible the foreign exchange concerns of the, of, of the business community and the people of Tobago. Additionally, the Central Bank has affirmed its commitment to assist the division and the assembly with um, capacity building and training programs in research and other areas of economics. I must say that I was really um, encouraged by the tenor of the meeting and the discussions held with the, the deputy governor as well as the new governor. I just want to touch on an issue of productivity before I wind up. Um, the division is in the process of establishing a mechanism to address the issues of productivity on the island. And you may recall coming out of last year's to big economic and business of look conference and uh, coming out of a series of consultations with stakeholders and the business community. Productivity was identified as a major issue affecting our economy. The division yesterday hosted a focus group session with the Tobago House of Assembly and other Tobago stakeholders facilitated by Mr. John Pilgrim Executive Director of the Barbados Productivity Council and persons from the Employers Consultative Association. The sessions involved representatives from labor, the private sector, and the media. 
and sought to identify the constraints, challenges um, faced by each sector to discuss strategic long and short term initiatives to enhance productivity on the island, to gather various perspectives and to ensure an understanding of the importance of productivity and to examine the issues of productivity in Tobago and to rationalize the process going forward. Today, administrators and other senior human resource personnel from the Tobago House of Assembly are participating in a two-day productivity workshop and both the focus group and the and the workshop that will be held today and tomorrow support our plans to formally um, intervene and to create a shift um, in productivity on the island and to address some of the, the issues that we have been seeing in the island to ensure that the island's productivity is enhanced. As we will all, all agree, the assembly is one of the largest employers on the island and we have a responsibility to treat with the issues of productivity here in Tobago. And in these times of economic challenges, I think one key component for us to surmount these challenges is for us to improve and increase the levels of productivity on the island. I just want to inform members of the media um, this is coming from the Division of Health and Social S Services um, with respect to a consultation, a targeted response against H1N1, not the swine flu virus, and, is, and Zika viruses. The Division of Health and S Social Services, in collaboration with the Faculty of Medical Sciences of the University of the West Indies, will be hosting a one-day symposium on Thursday, 10th March, starting at 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Pigeon Point Heritage Park Conference Facility. Registration is free, lunch is provided, um, dress code, business attire. And for more information or to RSVP, you can contact 639-3395 extension 7271 or 7272. Again, a targeted response against H1N1, swine flu, and the Zika virus. Um, a one-day symposium that will be hosted by the Division of Health and Social Services in collaboration with the Faculty of Medical Sciences, University of the West Indies, on Thursday, 10th March, starting at 8 a.m to 1 p.m. As I wrap up, um, in this period of adjustment, um, we are all required to, to have the mindset of accomplishing more with less, to do new and different things, to do the same things differently and more effectively. We have to increase our productivity, as I indicated, and um, Again, as I stated the last time I was here in January, that the assembly will be operating with, re with reduced resources as a result of the 7% um, reduction from the, as outlined by the Prime Minister in his December statement, the assembly that will result in a, a reduction in the assembly's fiscal package by just over $192 million. So in terms of our plans and programs that we identified in November for delivery, the assembly will not be able to, to we'll also have to postpone a number of projects um, because of that shortfall. So with that said, again, I urge all to be going to continue working together as we continue to be able to development. And in keeping with International Women's Day, let me congratulate Ms. Amril Douglas, a, a woman in fashion. She hosted her first fashion show on Saturday at the Bishop's High School. She took the bold and courageous step in the face of challenging times as an entrepreneur 
um, to step out boldly and to, sh to showcase um, several of her lines and her work. And I want to congratulate her as a woman, as an exemplar, leading in the field of entrepreneurship. You mentioned you, you had a meeting with the IMF, and you mentioned a lot of topics that you talked about. But what is the IMF saying in regards to like, our financial constraints? And I uh, would like to have like, some details, and not just the glossy version. And not, I, we want to know the truth. Like, what is the state of Tobago's economy from their perspective, and coming from those discussions that you had with them? Well, I can't talk on behalf of the IMF. I said we have to wait on the, the full Article 4 report. But um, just as I've mentioned before in terms of um, the Assembly's allocation, um, as, was, as I've mentioned, I've reported to persons in the media what, what the plans of the Assembly, and I've been consistent in this regard. I reported in November what our plans were following the announcement of the Prime Minister. Um, in November, I came again and, and we reported after deliberation um, in terms of what the reduction will be. And we gave a commitment that that reduction would not affect the payment of salaries, employment levels, but what it would do, it would affect um, the pace of delivery of a number of important projects in the Tobago House of Assembly. And um, what we also committed to do is to to look at alternative financing mechanisms and to see how we can treat some of those large mega projects um, where the cost, uh, the cost of the projects would be um, outside of the, we could not, that would not be able to be funded by the, our annual allocation. As you're aware, the allocation to the assembly on the development program side is approximately 404 also million dollars and you have some of our major projects that um, exceed that and the, the issue you have is how do we fund, fund some of those projects. Already you, um, the Chief Secretary reported that um, he's part of a national infrastructure committee and some of those mega projects will be funded um, by um, funding, uh, will be provision um, by funds from the Toronto government to take care of those mega projects. So in a nutshell, um, we continue on, on Tobago's development path and um, we are surmounting the, the challenges. But again, we are looking at what is happening on the, in the global environment because we are not insulated from what happens in the glo global environment, i.e. The, the price of oil and natural gas. And that will also have an impact on us here in Tobago. Okay, um, were there any suggestions coming out of that IMF meeting as to what Tobago can do uh, to um, help with the situation, the financial situation? Well, um, coming out of the meeting, we looked at other revenue enhancement measures. We, um, coming out of discussions, we also agreed um, of the need to increase our, um, our efforts with respect to economic diversification. We also outlined the, a number of successes in the area of economic diversification in, in some of our programs, um, i.e. the our Enterprise Assistance Fund and Enterprise Assistance Grant programs, and as well as some of the disbursements um, in the venture capital in the Venture Capital Fund and some of the developments that are ongoing at the Cove Eco Industrial and Business Park. So again, um, I believe we are on point in terms of the prescriptions to, to treat with these economic challenges. And um, I think one thing, a central theme that I continue to, I continue to see in all of my statements is that let's not waste a good crisis. Um, these challenges Give us a, provides an opportunity for us to review operations, to be more innovative and to in, reinvent how we do things, and for us to be more, more productive in, in the utilization of scarce economic resources. Okay. When will this report from the IMF be available? Um, the team is here for two weeks and following um, their departure um, um, within probably another 30 to 45 days thereafter. Thank you for staying with us for the Tobago House of Assembly's Post-Executive Council Media Briefing 
for the week ending March 12, 2016.